I remember coming into your office that day and I was I was really looking for someone that was relatable and could understand where I was coming from, especially in terms of like past symptoms. So I had a lot of ear issues. I said I had damage in my joints. Um, I also had bleeding ears, lots of structural issues. And I remember our comfort, like our consultation, and I remember watching you specifically um, giving me an answer for the first time that I had never had before. Um, I, yeah. I think the reason why I chose you, no, I know the reason I chose you. Um, I remember watching you, and you're sitting there, and you're like, okay, I kind of, I kind of, I think I know what this is. And I remember watching you just kind of move through the process of solving my problem. And I think that was when I said 100%, I'm like, okay, if you can give me like a solid answer, it was so cool because your eyes were like, okay, you have this kind of like where you're going, okay, I'm processing, processing, no idea, where, where can this go? And then I, I remember when you lit up, you're like, oh, I know what this is. And I was like, okay, what, what, what is? And you're like, oh. I know what this was, and you finally gave me that solid answer of having juvenile idiopathic arthritis. And the more I dug into that, the more um, the more sense it made, and for that to have that diagnosis. After years of pain, dog. It was it was my answer for who I wanted to work with, and. You know, there's a lot of sacrifice to being in LA and having that, um, being a dissertation, but it was 100% worth it knowing that I could trust you to solve any problems in the future or work through it to give me a solid answer. I'm doing really well. I, I tell people all the time, I think I was on day three or four after surgery, right after surgery, super puffy, very big and, you know, whatever. But my body, I remember going to sleep that night and waking up at five in the morning and just being so full of life. My body was ready to get up and go. It was like, okay, we've slept enough, which I have never done before. We've slept enough. We can go ahead and go ahead and go do something. And I remember that energy and just thinking to myself, if I had to do this over, I would just for the fact that I can breathe. So now we're at eight months, I have been able to run better, I've been able to breathe better, I've been able to sleep better. And overall, my person, as a mom, as a, as Sany, as my roles and whatever, I am showing up more than where I was before because that pain is no longer. I think, first of all, it's normal to be scared. It's normal to have nerves to um, hesitate. You know, fear is something that actually it can be used for either bad or good. But fear is more of a placement saying, hey, there is a, a possible shift. It doesn't have to be negative. And I'll admit there's a lot of, you know, fearful feelings, but that that's normal. Like it's normal to, when you're stepping into something new, um, it kind of says, hey, put down your alertness. Um, but taking that step and actually trusting your surgeon and finding a good surgeon who you can create with and talk to and um, have that kind of personal relationship, I think that really puts you forward as well as having a good team behind you because I know without, without the whole team, I wouldn't have been able to be emotionally, mentally, and physically stable to move forward through the surgery. 100% because your mind is extremely powerful and I love that um, I love it here it is that patient focus because it does take a village and you are going to need support and a lot of people you know you can't go into this saying oh I'll just do everything strictly by myself it's, it's not possible um, and that's why I love the team approach so much I'm like number one you gotta find your correct surgeon a surgeon that kind of vibes with you for real um, if you are not comfortable and confident in your surgeon, that's how your whole journey is going to be. Um, regardless of if you have a team approach or not, because you are not comfortable with who you're working with. So one, find a surgeon you're comfortable.
people with. Um, two is you do need a lot of support afterwards. So find somebody that is going to see you at your worst, <laughs> you know, uh, see you for me. I, I, like I had a moment when I was like, my love is busted and you know, I'm just so emotional. Someone who can be with you when you're extremely vulnerable, but someone that you can trust with all of those emotions and physically as well. Um, I would say, thirdly, third, maybe my third. Um, definitely, if you're going to consider doing double jaw surgery, you need to also consider doing myofunctional therapy because they go so hand in hand for sure. So those are the top three: surgeon, someone support team after, and doing myofunctional.